Wrestlers go through a lot of appearance changes throughout their tenure in regard to both their bodies and their gimmicks. But these 10 pictures of WWE stars early in their careers are nearly unrecognizable. 10 early pictures of WWE stars you wouldn't recognize today. It's hard to recognize some of these wrestlers, but you know what's easy? Following the Sportster on YouTube by clicking the subscribe button right now. Batista. When Batista first attempted to break into wrestling with a tryout at the WCW power plant, he was told by Sergeant Buddy Lee Parker that he would never make it in the biz. Unwilling to take no for an answer, Batista then tried out for WWE and was sent to the Afa Anawahi Wild Samoan Training Center. Based on his head of long, luxurious, and somewhat unruly dark hair paired with some facial fuzz, he looked like he probably fit in perfectly alongside Afa and Sika. However, after a stint in Anawahi's World Extreme Wrestling, Batista eventually made his debut with Ohio Valley in 2000 as Leviathan, with the same haircut he's generally supported for the last few years, a shaved head. He doesn't look exactly the same though, as Batista, now almost 48, has added quite a bit more muscle mass in the last two decades, even though he was already jacked to begin with. And as you can see, his arms were also enormous blank canvases back in the day, which have since been filled with a trio of grandiose tattoos, including a large tribal piece on both upper arms and a dragon that covers his entire back. Bret Hart Bret Hart's first foray into wrestling was actually as a referee with his father's Calgary-based Stampede Wrestling in 1976, when he was just 19 years old. Two years later, after a wrestler dropped out at the last minute, Stu Hart asked his son to step in and wrestle in front of a crowd for the first time. It was around then that this beauty of a snapshot was taken, showing Hart as a baby-faced kid with thick and frizzy hair that's clearly stuck in some awkward in-between phase. Heck, pretty much everything about Hart says that he's in an awkward in-between phase, as he doesn't have a whole lot of muscles to speak of and looks about half the size of his future self. If you can find some video clips from this time, you'll also quickly notice he doesn't have any of the personality, toughness, or attitude for which he'd later become known. And most obviously, Hart hadn't adopted any of his future trademarks, like the pink spandex, leather jacket, tassels, sunglasses, and long curly hair. Oh well, at least we know it eventually worked out pretty well for the dude in the end. Chris Jericho and Lance Storm You might be able to pick out Lance Storm in this photo as the guy's face, hair, and general expression have basically looked the same his entire life. He's just added some muscle, but the blonde-haired fellow standing with him? Believe it or not, that's none other than a very young Chris Jericho, back when the duo competed as the Thrill Seekers in Jim Cornette's Appalachian Smoky Mountain Wrestling in the early 90s. We don't know what's more amusing with Y2J's look, his bleach blonde locks styled in a Farrah Fawcett-esque quaff, the Donald Trump-like tan lines around his eyes, or the costumes that make him and Lance look like Evil Knievel's country western sisters. Making matters even more amusing, this was actually the second time the two would be paired together, as they were previously part of a tag team called Sudden Impact. You gotta wonder how bad those outfits must have been in order for that tag team to be scrapped in favor of this hideous replacement. An injury eventually split up the team and both wrestlers found success in their solo careers. But now that 22 years have passed, we demand a reunion complete with the original Thrill Seeker outfits. Kane. As long as we've known Kane, he's had either a mask and long scraggly hair or nothing on his head at all. No mask, no facial hair, and a shaved head. Then who, pray tell, is the curly mopped, orange-headed dude seen here sporting a bushy goatee and a white lab coat? Well, that's a snap from Kane's early WWE days back in 1995, when his gimmick was Isaac Yankum, DDS, Jerry Lawler's personal dentist. Interestingly, the wrestler, whose real name is Glenn Jacobs, actually made his WWE debut as Mike Unabom on the February 20th, 1995 episode of Raw. But the uninspired gimmick was quickly scrapped and replaced with the dentist character as Jerry Lawler needed a fiendish way to finally rid the WWE of his nemesis, Bret Hart. During this time, Yankum acted as somewhat of a jobber to the stars as he competed in both the 1996 Survivor Series and Royal Rumble and had notable losses to the likes of The Undertaker, Jake the Snake Roberts, The Ultimate Warrior, and Mark Marrow. After just over a year, Isaac Yankum was also scrapped, and Jacobs briefly played a Diesel slash Kevin Nash impersonator before finally debuting as Kane, the demon half-brother of The Undertaker. Kevin Owens and Neville 
Other than the obvious lack of facial hair and ink, Kevin Owens looks pretty much the same in this old photo as he does now. I mean, sure, he's a bit younger, but you can still tell it's Owens. As for the other guy, holy crap, that's Neville? He looks like Screech's even dorkier younger brother. On top of having about half the muscle mass of the current Neville, there's also that curly mob that no one in their right mind would ever find intimidating. At least it covers up his pointy elf ears. Still, the guy in the photo looks more like Neville's lunch than Neville himself. Since then, the wrestler who was born, Benjamin Satterley, has bulked up quite a bit, grown his hair long, and added either a chin goatee or full beard. In other words, he actually looks threatening, instead of threatened, and he's gone from prey to predator. For the record, this snap was likely taken about 10 years ago, when both wrestlers competed with Ring of Honor and Pro Wrestling Guerrilla. Although their paths were a bit different in between, Owens and Neville both made it to the WWE within two years of each other. Now let's take a break from all the nostalgia for a quiz question. While all of the wrestlers in this list have looked different throughout their careers, another wrestler spent much of 2014 dressing as a different wrestler or celebrity each week, including Abraham Lincoln, LeBron James, Bret Hart, and Shawn Michaels. Who was this wrestler? Stay tuned until the end for the answer. Paige. The daughter of professional wrestlers Rowdy Ricky Knight and Sweet Soraya, Paige made her debut in 2005 at the age of just 13, after her father asked her to step in for a wrestler who didn't show up. Her first recorded match was the next year when she went by the name of Brittany Knight and joined a triple threat tag team with her mother. In case that sounds too weird to be true, here's the shot to prove it. As you can see, not only is Paige posing with her mom, but she looks very young and totally different from today. Her normally black hair was a dirty blonde color and she was lacking her signature heavy black eyeliner, fishnet stockings, and other gothic style ring attire. Still a maturing teenager at that time, Paige was also quite thin, she lacked her feminine curves, and had basically no muscle mass whatsoever. Fast forward to today, and not only has Paige added some character to her gimmick, but she has filled out and beefed up her muscle quite a bit. She's still not a massive bodybuilder or anything like that, but she looks much more like someone who is capable of nabbing the two Divas Championships that she has won in her brief and successful career. Randy Orton Wait a minute, Randy, is that you? So much has changed, we don't even know where to start. If we had to guess, this photo of a young Orton with a Caesar haircut and lack of muscle mass was likely taken sometime between his United States Marine Corps discharge in 1999 and his WWE contract signing in 2001. In fact, it was probably right around 2000, when he was with Mid-Missouri Wrestling Association Southern Illinois Conference Wrestling, as Randy was already sporting a shaped head when he debuted in Ohio Valley Wrestling the following year. Now 37, Randy Orton clearly looks much different. He has a wider jaw, keeps his hair short and buzzed, maintains some light stubble on his face, and also has much larger and more chiseled muscles. Aside from all that, there's one more obvious difference. Orton's collection of tattoos has grown from a couple of little squiggles on his upper arms to full sleeves that completely cover each of his upper limbs, as well as some additional ink on the backside of his shoulders. In short, Randy is much more intimidating and no longer looks like a jeans model from a department store catalog. He's still just as tan though. Shawn Michaels and Scott Hall. Here's another two for one. This snap, likely taken in 1986 or 1987, shows a young Scott Hall posing next to an even younger Shawn Michaels, with both of them nearly unrecognizable if it weren't for the caption at the top. And even that text is misleading, as Michaels' first name is spelled S-E-A-N in the photo instead of S-H-A-W-N, which is both the correct spelling of his actual middle name as well as his ring name. His appearance isn't much of a clue to his identity either, as Shawn's hair is kept in a medium-length mullet as as opposed to his usual ponytail or the slick pulled back look. Plus, although he has some muscle mass, there's nearly no definition. At least one thing clearly never changes, and that's the Heartbreak Kid's disdain for wearing shirts. Hall, for his part, is flaunting a giant 70s porno stash without his signature stubble and curl of greaser hair hanging down on his forehead. Considering that's a look that Hall began way back when he was the Diamond Stud in 1991, and one that he kept for nearly 25 years, it's almost impossible to recognize him with a thick, fluffy head of fur. And speaking of fur, check out that extra thick layer of insulation covering his torso. Stone Cold Steve Austin Say for a couple of backstage segments, we'd never refer to Stone Cold Steve Austin as being goofy, especially to his face. But it's hard to find another term to describe Austin's appearance in this photo, especially with that silly smile. 
As some background for the image, way before he earned his WWE nickname, Stone Cold wrestled with WCW under the name Stunning Steve Austin. In addition to having a different moniker, he obviously also looked quite different in the early 90s. As this 1991 snap shows, he was noticeably less buff and less threatening, had long and scraggly blonde hair, and featured no goatee or facial hair of any kind. In fact, he looked like a total babyface, and we're not even talking about the wrestling term here. At the time, Austin's valet was Genie Lady Blossom Clark, who is pictured with him here as he shows off his WCW World Television Championship belt. Even after later joining a tag team with Brian Pillman in 1993, Austin kept his hair as the duo was called the Hollywood Blondes. And yes, that's of course the same Brian Pillman who infamously pulled a pistol on Austin when Stone Cold broke into his house during a 1996 storyline. Oh, how things can change. The Undertaker. Mark Calloway spent more than 26 years in the WWE and basically used the same Undertaker gimmick the entire time, which accounts for most of his three-decade-long career. Prior to that, he briefly wrestled under the names Texas Red, The Master of Pain, Mean Mark Callis, and Punisher Dice Morgan, all of whom looked similar to each other, but nothing like the Taker of today. Besides the lack of hat and other creepy black attire, The Undertaker's hair was short, curly, and naturally bright orange, as opposed to the dark red, dark brown, or black quaff he featured for so many years afterward. We're not sure if he dyes it or if it just became darker as he got older, but it definitely looks better, regardless of the reason. Although we don't know him personally, we'd also guess that The Undertaker would never again don a leather vest like the one in the photo. The dead dude enjoys his leather, but not like this. In one final difference, this photo of a young Mark Calloway doesn't include any ink whatsoever. Since then, Taker has added countless tattoos up and down his arms, as well as his neck, shoulders, and stomach, including the BSK design for his brothers in the Bone Street crew. Back in 2014, it was Damian Sandow who briefly held the gimmick of being a comedic impersonator. While most were silly and over the top, we personally thought his Vince McMahon was spot on. Do you have any other favorite photos of wrestlers early in their careers? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to like and share this video. For more wrestling videos like this one, follow The Sportster on YouTube. See ya!